All right, uh, thank you to the members of the media present, uh, as well as South Africans watching at home. Uh, my name is Councillor Quena Maloto, and I'll be chairing uh, this press briefing today. Now we're here in beautiful KZN at uh, the Virginia airport after conducting a uh, successful aerial oversight of the Durban ports. Now, the Durban port crisis is having uh, terrible financial impacts on South African businesses that goods and products are currently stuck out at sea and really has the potential to torpedo uh, a multi-billion rand uh, South African export economy. Uh, the port crisis uh, has uh, the potential to really uh, worsen the cost of living crisis that's affecting so many South Africans, as well as be a catalyst uh, for more job losses in our South African uh, economy. And similar to ESCOM and the load shedding crisis, this is a direct result um, of a failed uh, state-run SOE model that's been implemented by the ANC government. Uh, so we're joined here today by DA Federal Leader John Steenhuizen, as well as our DA Shadow Minister, for Public Enterprises, Dr. Mimi Gondwe. Uh, we have uh, our Premier candidate here in KZN, uh, Chris Papas, uh, as well as our DA Provincial Leader, Dean McPherson. Uh, I will now be handing over to John Stiernazen just to give us an update uh, on the Durban port crisis. Thanks, over to you, John. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Quena, and uh, good morning to all of you, and uh, thank you very much for those of you who've made your way here. Um, together with the DA's uh, Shadow Minister of Public Enterprises, Dr. Mimi Gondwe, uh, we've just concluded an extensive aerial oversight of the Durban Harbour and, of course, the ships that are waiting to get into port to determine the full extent of the South African ports crisis, which clearly threatens to paralyse South Africa's economy, uh, to paralyse our container uh, terminal, operation and to halt the international trade in goods and to paralyze the retail economy ahead of the festive season. And I can confirm after being up there that the situation is disastrous. The 60,000 containers that are aboard vessels just out to sea there are now piling up due to the collapse of the Durban port at the hands of Transnet, which has absolutely failed to maintain and upgrade port infrastructure for decades. This is despite the announcement by the President in October 2020 of Operation Vulindlele, which was an initiative between the Presidency and National Treasury to improve the operational performance of multimodal bulk infrastructure, bulk, bulk freight rail network and the port system. Three years down the line, with congested ports, a dysfunctional freight rail network, and truck queues stretching kilometers, the verdict is clear. Operation Vulindlela has failed and it has failed spectacularly. According to the 2021 World Bank Index of Container Port Performance, which ranked the efficiency of 370 maritime ports around the world, Durban currently sits at 364 out of 370 and Cape Town at 365 out of 370. This means that under President Ramaphosa's presidency, this has become the worst performing country in container performance globally. Now, President Ramaphosa admitted to this catastrophic failure in government and in Transnet's operational leadership during his visit to Richards Bay Port on Thursday last week. It's also ironic that the president visited the Durban port but he wasn't there to deal with the port crisis. He wasn't there to deal with the fact that you've got these 60,000 containers sitting offshore, not to deal with the fact that, as we saw today, there are a number of cranes and gantries and facilities at the Durban Port Harbour which remain empty as we stand here, despite the fact that all these ships are waiting to come in. He was here to cut the ribbon on a cruise ship that was coming to Durban. He then jetted off to Richards Bay where he went to look at road congestion. Not a word about the Durban port, not a word about the container crisis that is affecting us here in this particular area and putting our economy at such risk. This isn't leadership. And increasingly, the president is becoming a spectator 
to the collapse of the country wherever he goes, whether it's the failing national grid with Eskim moving into stage six, despite the fact that Fakil Mbulula promised us that by December load shedding will be over, the electricity minister this week indicated that we can expect load shedding to continue into the December period. The collapsing rail network, the collapsing port infrastructure, the collapsing road network. Everywhere the president goes around the country, he's shocked. He is astounded. He calls for heads to roll, but nothing ever happens. The heads don't roll, the situation doesn't improve. His government has become a government of announcements. The announcement of great things, but zero delivery thereof. And this stands in stark contrast to leadership being shown in other parts of the continent. William Ruto, the president of Kenya, just this last week announced that they would be putting out to private-public partnership and privatization over 35 state-owned entities because he says that the bureaucracy and red tape of government is constraining them and holding them back from playing a meaningful role in the Kenyan economy. The Kenyan ports are also already in partnership with the private sector to improve efficiency and effectiveness. And here in Durban, in Richards Bay, in Cape Town, in Port Elizabeth, there is a paralysis of government, a paralysis of ideas and a paralysis of leadership. A president who is becoming a spectator to the failures of his own government. Now, the president essentially last week confirmed on public television that Operation Vulandlela has failed and it has failed spectacularly. And what was his solution to the problem? He ignored this port, harvest, this port crisis and opted to open that cruise terminal instead. It just shows how completely out of touch he is with the real situation on the ground. We would like to make a number of suggestions about what would need to be done to urgently resolve the situation. Firstly among these, we're calling on the President to establish a port performance task team which must include the private sector stakeholders and international port industry experts to urgently undertake, draft and implement a port performance recovery plan where the National Logistics Crisis Committee which was set up to do precisely this, has failed spectacularly, and it's time for us to do something different. Secondly, we'll be calling in Parliament for the creation of an ad hoc parliamentary committee comprised of the departments of transport, public enterprises, and finance to fast track solutions, remove legislative, financial, and regulatory bottlenecks that are holding us back from getting our ports operating at full speed. And this must take place before the end of the year. Parliament cannot rise while we have this crisis on our seas. Thirdly, we are calling on the President to collaborate with the private sector to salvage Transnet by commencing the process towards privatization of the state-owned entity for the economic well-being of our country. And fourthly, we are calling on the President to stop hiding from the people's representatives and to come to Parliament and make a statement about what is going on in South African ports and what immediate steps his government is going to take to deal with this crisis which threatens to collapse our economy. This is not just a story about ships waiting to come into the harbour. This is not just a story about a port that is not operating at full capacity. This is a story of an enormous threat to our economic well-being as a country, and I'm very glad that Chris Pappas, our Premier candidate, is here because he knows only too well how important the Port of Durban is to our fortunes, not only as KwaZulu-Natal, but as a country as well. This port crisis will also be financially devastating for the thousands of South African businesses who are waiting for their products that are stuck out at sea. Retailers who were targeting Black Friday sales have lost an economic opportunity, and similarly tens of thousands of containers will now only be delivered after Christmas, missing a critical sales opportunity 
and economic growth opportunity for our private sector. Accumulating surcharges as ships wait to berth will be passed on to the consumer, further driving up the cost and putting even more inflationary pressure on all South Africans. For businesses that have paid up front for the containers and not being able to realize sales from the imported products, this will increase financial stress and possible job losses due to elevated interest payments. It's also interesting that the news broke just today about two important impacts of the failing logistics crisis in South Africa. The first was a warning by the VW Volkswagen CEO around the devastating impact that the logistics crisis could have and could pose to their viability as an operation in South Africa. The second was the announcement from Anglo that government had begged them to delay job losses that are coming as a result of inefficiencies in the port and inefficiencies with the logistics network, encouraging government to please only delay these job losses until after next year's election. This is the cynical manipulation of this government. Instead of dealing with the crisis, they instead choose to try and manipulate the outcome to prevent the embarrassment that would follow from the fact that their failure to govern properly their failure to implement proper logistics plans have failed. Intermediary importers who supply retailers are also going to be severely affected by this unrelenting backlog, backlog at the ports. And there's no question that many containers have sell-by dates, which may force some chain stores to cancel orders not delivered on time, exerting even further cost pressures to the importer. With many of our retailers, our importers, and our citizens buckling under the weight of failing governance, load shedding, and water crises, and the fact that Eskom now needs to burn more diesel to keep the lights on, shows that this is a government that is not serious about economic growth. This is also going to put enormous pressure on households, as inevitably the prices of the goods being imported will have to rise. I'm now going to hand over to our Shadow Minister of Public Enterprises, Dr. Mimi Gondwe, to outline some further steps that we will be taking. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, let me just um, formally introduce myself. My name is Dr. Mimi Gondre. I am the Shadow Minister for Public Enterprises for the DA. Um, what John and I witnessed while we're in the helicopter is indeed um, a crisis of epic proportions. Um, we saw countless ships. John and I started counting and we even lost count. We saw containers um, at the port. We saw very little activity at the port as well, dysfunctional cranes, um, and everything that um, we had received complaints on, we actually saw today. Um, I agree with John that although the president said heads must roll, I doubt very much uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa will ensure that accountability and consequent management are the order of the day. And uh, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. If he's to do that, he's gonna ensure that accountability and consequent management start at the top with, with Minister Praveen Gordon. Minister Praveen Gordon is out of touch with what's happening in the SOEs. Um, at a very first meeting that I attended for the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises, one of the first questions I asked him was, is there a port crisis? And I remember I was only two days into the portfolio. I said, is there a port crisis at the Durban port? Because I'd been inundated with complaints um, around inefficiencies at the Durban port. And these complaints related to, amongst other things, dysfunctional cranes, um, ships being delayed at sea, and delayed exam stops, um, and dysfunctional cranes and so on and so on. So there were basically complaints leveled at the infrastructure and the equipment at the port. And I remember very clearly that Minister Praveen Gordon responded to say that as far as he's concerned, there is no crisis at the Durban port. And that shows very clearly that Minister Gordon 
is out of touch with the SOEs that fall under his portfolio. And so the president is also out of touch because very recently the president indicated that he had um, instructed management at the Richards Bay port to ensure that all the issues are resolved by early next year. But retailers don't have that much time. They don't have until early next year. Um, your import and export companies don't have until next year. Um, they're losing money every day um, when these ports are not um, functioning efficiently. And so on the 13th of November, I then wrote to the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises, and I sensitized them to the fact that there were issues at the Durban port as well as the Cape Town port. The Cape Town port also has its issues. The complaints around delays in the turnaround time for ships, um, delays around congestion at that particular port. And that particular port accounts for 35% of our agricultural exports. So you can imagine how much money is being lost on a daily basis at that particular port. I then requested that we go on oversight, and that was on the 13th of November. I then requested that we go on oversight to the Durban port, the Cape Town port. And at that time, um, we hadn't uh, you know, been made aware of the issues at the Riches Bay port. And later, I then wrote to him when I, we became aware of the issues at the Riches, uh, Riches Bay um, port, and I asked him to extend the scope of the oversight. And um, I can confirm that from the 7th to the 8th of December, the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises will be going on oversight at the insistence of the DA. Um, this is a crisis that threatens to collapse our economy, and it basically has to do with Transnet's failure to maintain, repair, or replace critical infrastructure and equipment. And it's unfortunate that this is something that could have been avoided had they been, um, you know, proper planning, had they been, you know, proper oversight over what's happening in these ports. And as I indicated, even Minister Pravin, uh, Pravin Gordon was denying on the 8th of November that there was a crisis at the port. Yet, I was two days into the portfolio, inundated with complaints around the inefficiencies at the Durban port. And so, what we'll do as a DA after we've gone on oversight with the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises and unfortunately we will not be doing the Cape Town port, we'll only be doing the Durban and the Richest Bay port. Um, I'll ensure that the committee calls Minister Godon to account because as I indicated, accountability has to start at the top. So if heads are gonna roll, they have to roll right from the top. And so we will call Mr. Uh, Godan to the committee to come and account for the inefficiencies that we would have obviously witnessed as the committee on oversight. And we will also request that um, he presents us with a maintenance plan. Maintenance plan that speaks to the maintenance, to the repairing, um, you know, to the replacement of critical infrastructure and equipment at the port. We will also um, request that the um, the entity Transnet tables its turnaround plan because Transnet has a turnaround plan, but Parliament has not seen that turnaround plan. And we want to make sure that the targets that are in that turnaround plan are achievable and they're time bound and they are connected to the challenges that we're currently experiencing. We'll also impress upon Minister Godan to increase private sector participation in port management. The private sector has to start playing a pivotal role via concession or cooperation in the efficient operation of our ports right across the country. We'll also request Minister Godan to provide an update on the deal that Transnet entered into with the Philippines headquartered International Container Terminal Services Inc., which was the preferred bidder for a 25-year joint venture to develop and manage container terminals, uh, container terminal DC2 Pier 2. And so these are the steps that we intend to take um, from um, a parliamentary level in, in terms of ensuring that we hold uh, Minister Godan accountable as the portfolio committee, and I sit on that portfolio committee. And you might be asking yourself, why didn't John and I con um, conduct a physical oversight? Why did we choose an aerial oversight? Because we wanted to get a better view of what's happening from the top. And I know that I was going to be part of the oversight by the portfolio committee on pre uh, public enterprises. So we will be going on oversight with the committee. I thank you.
Right, no, thank you uh, so much. Uh, we will now uh, allow for questions from the media. Uh, please just introduce yourself uh, and what media house you're from. We'll take the, the first round of questions. Uh, we can allow for, for I think, uh, three questions to, to start. So now just get an indication. Yeah, any questions from the media? Go ahead, ENCA. Thank you. Oh. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Leti Wemluli from ENCA. I'd just like to get um, an understanding on what you saw when you were flying over. Um, and also, another question has to do with Cape Town. Why aren't you doing an oversight in Cape Town? Thank you. Would you like to start with that one? Oh, great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the, uh, what we saw when we were over there is a large number of, of ships. Uh, this used to be my ward when I was a ward councillor. And I've lived and, and spent most of my life right here. I've never in my life seen as many ships stuck out at sea as they are here now. And it's as far as the eye can see and beyond the horizon. All ships waiting to come in. When we went over the Durban Harbour, what, you, what we witnessed was a number of key areas that should be busy offloading and loading containers where they are empty, the berths are empty. It cannot be that you have so many ships waiting out at sea and yet you've got empty berths and idle cranes uh, within the harbour. Why are we not in Cape Town? Well, Durban is the container port capital uh, in South Africa. It is by far the largest amount of containers being handled and it is still the port of choice for large groups of the retailers that bring their products in here and that is why it is so fundamentally uh, important uh, to do what uh, to, to make sure that the Durban port is operating this is going to really hit retailers incredibly hard this year it's going to really ensure that products that we need to get to market in other places around the world are also going to be significantly affected because what will increasingly start to happen is that people will look to other ports on the continent. We already have a large part of the uh, traffic that used to go to Richards Bay and the deputy mayor is here and he will indicate to you that they I had indicated um, that we should also do with 35% of our agricultural exports. So it's a very important port. Um, so I had indicated, and because I had received complaints around, um, you know, the delay turn, turnaround time for ships and congestion in relation to that particular port, so I had requested that we go there. So um, for now, the committee felt that we should prioritize the Richards Bay and the Durban port, and I'm sure that at some point we will go to the, the Cape Town port. And just to add to what John said about... Um, you know, shipping companies um, preferring other ports. Um, Maersk has started preparing other countries. Um, they're using Port Louis in Mauritius now instead of um, coming to our ports because they're no longer attractive because of the fact that, you know, they're inefficient at the moment. And, and really, um, I think these problems are, are piling. And now you have even importers being levied um, um, a congestion surcharge, which is unfair, um, and that um, you know surcharge um, can go up to a thousand US dollars, and so there, you know, this crisis has brought on so many um, problems. Transnet is losing its revenue. Um, I mean, at some point, I read that um, you know they indicated that they had lost 160, at least 160 million in revenue. Um, 
you know, due to the port crisis. And, and the country is losing out as well in terms of getting our exports out there because of this port crisis. And it's an issue of poor maintenance and not repairing and replacing uh, critical if infrastructure and equipment at Transnet. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Are there any other questions from any media houses? What's up? Okay, no. Thank you so much for uh, attending, everyone. And thank you to our, our viewers at home. Uh, our ports are in crisis, uh, but the DA does have a plan. Um, and uh, this is why it's so important, John, that uh, people get involved inside our rescue mission. Uh, go to check.da.org.za and please do register to vote. And please don't lose hope, South Africa. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you very much, everyone. In this election, only the registered have the power. If you're tired of load shedding, register to vote. If you're tired of corruption, register to vote. If you're tired of the rising cost of living, register to vote. And if you're tired of a government that's continuously working against you, register to vote. Go to check.da.org.za and let's give power to the register. Thanks for watching. All across our beautiful country, people are joining forces to elect the new government that can rescue South Africa. Help our rescue mission and register to vote. Get help registering online now at check.da.org.za. Let's rescue South Africa.